What's up everybody? I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be going over several things that I've been using with my iPad Air that I think you might appreciate. It doesn't matter if you're an artist, a student, a filmmaker, or if you just use your iPad Air for Netflix and some gaming, you should be able to take something from this video and add it to your arsenal to really get the most out of your iPad Air. I'll link everything mentioned in this video in the description, so if you feel like checking any of this stuff out, just check down there. Let's start with the case that I've been using, which is the Logitech Folio Touch the newest model, because there is two models. There's like an older model, and then this is the one with all of the bugs and issues fixed. It's half the price of the Apple Magic Keyboard case for the iPad, and has a few features that the latter doesn't. For starters, there's a full row of iPad OS shortcut keys right at the top for easily adjusting volume, brightness, and more. The integrated kickstand is great and offers several viewing angles and positions, so you should be able to find a comfortable way to view your iPad while you're typing or working on it. I love the securing magnetic flap that keeps the Apple Pencil in place during carry. Plus the overall case offers more protection than the Magic Keyboard case, but it's also a little bit thicker, so just keep that in mind. The best thing about this case is that it still utilizes the smart connector, so you get instant connectivity and no delays, which in my opinion is awesome. For another option, if you happen to already have like a Bluetooth keyboard, like this Magic Keyboard right here, you can always grab a multi-position stand like this one and, um, you know, kind of prop your iPad up in it, angle it, and then use the Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse like the MX Anywhere right here. I picked up this stand for like 20 bucks and it offers quite a few positions and it's relatively portable if you're cool with the extra thickness. Logitech also offers Mac and iOS keyboards that are similar to the Magic Keyboard for like 40 bucks. So if you don't have the budget for the Magic Keyboard, just grab one of those. Going back to the Logitech MX Anywhere, if you don't wanna have to buy another mouse, especially this one, and you already have like a trackpad or an Apple Magic Mouse, you can easily connect it to your iPad Air through Bluetooth and it will work just fine. Another great use case for this stand is to use your iPad as like an external monitor for your iMac or for your MacBook Pro with Sidecar. It really comes in handy and I don't know, I like the stand and I like the connectivity options that I have with my iPad when it comes to my desktop computers. The screen protector I'm using comes from this video sponsor, which is Paperlike. Paperlike makes screen protectors that imitate the feel of paper. It's something that you really need to experience in person versus just hearing me talk about it since on camera, it just seems like a typical matte style screen protector, but that's really not the case. Paperlike incorporated nano dot technology or micro beads all over their screen protector that cause subtle vibrations to the Apple Pencil to simulate the feeling of writing on paper. Not only does it feel like paper, but at times it even has the sound of a pen on paper. It's a little freaky. <laughs> Unlike other anti-fingerprint and anti-glare screen protectors, the Paperlike doesn't interfere with the screen quality or clarity. In fact, another neat characteristic of the Paperlike screen protector is that it enhances the clarity of the display depending on the content that you're watching. It sounds weird, but once you see it in person, you'll know exactly what I mean. Check them out at the link in the description. They offer screen protectors for all the most recent iPads and some of the older ones. If you're already using a screen protector, let me know in the comment section which screen protector you're using and which one that you recommend personally. In order to really get the most out of your iPad Air, you really need to get a dock to expand its capabilities. The dock that I'm using comes from Kanex, but before this dock, I was using the 12 South Stay Go, which is still a great option, by the way. The Kanex dock, however, adds a huge convenience factor since it can stay attached to your iPad Air. It fits on the iPad without a case, without any issue. But unfortunately, it's not compatible with the Logitech Folio Touch. That said, if you have the budget or if you already have the Apple Magic Keyboard case, you can remove this little rubber piece right here and it fits right on to the Apple Magic Keyboard case. Um, you might have to finagle it a little bit, but it will fit. Or you could technically Velcro the Canix dock to the back of the Folio Touch and you could use it that way. It offers a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port that supports 4K up to 30 Hertz and 2K at 60 Hertz, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB-C pass-through PD charging up to 60 watt port, and then you have a micro SD card slot and then an SD card slot. Quick tip, 
If you want to expand the internal storage of your iPad, you can use this dock. And then something like this Lexar 1066X Silver Series card, which this is 128 gigabytes, and you can just leave it plugged right into your dock, and now you've expanded the storage. The Canix dock supports cards up to two terabytes, and the 1066X Silver Series currently goes up to 256 gigabytes, but it has read speeds of 160 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 120 megabytes per second, which is plenty fast for transfers. If you find yourself needing a little bit more storage, Lexar does make a 633X Series card that goes up to 512 gigabytes, but you do get slower speeds. You can always use a different brand SD or micro SD card as well, but since I prefer Lexar, that's the reason why I'm recommending them. I've been really trying to get back into music creation, hence the reason why I have a MIDI keyboard here. It's something that I used to do every single day when I was in high school, and I continued it all through college, but kind of fell out of it due to life. I picked up the Akai MPK Mini. Um, this is a MIDI keyboard, of course, which I use in GarageBand on my iPad thanks to the Canix dock. It's one of the most highly rated and recommended MIDI keyboards for beginners, and I can personally recommend it because I've found myself using it really easily. Um, it works with a wide array of apps on any platform. It has 25 keys altogether, eight drum pads that are backlit, eight knobs, and other controls to help dial in your instruments and your loops. It plugs in using a USB type a chord and it functions beautifully. I'll keep you updated as I make music, so make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as that's where I'll share my music. If you want to check out a song that I did in the past, click the card at the top because it'll take you over to the music video. It's a setup tour. You guys probably already know that I've been following me for a while, but I'm really proud of it, so give it a watch. Speaking of music, let's talk about earbuds. Traditionally, I just use these, my Apple AirPods Pro. I know they're not the best, and I know that they're probably overpriced for what they offer, but they're convenient, and they're small, they're portable, they have great battery life, and I like them, so that's that. But these are terrible when it comes to music creation or editing audio because of the Bluetooth connection and the delay that comes with that connection. So with that being said, I have the Moondrop Starfield IEMs or in-ear monitor headphones. They have a detachable design, which is really convenient, and they come with a stiff braided cable that um, I'm not a huge fan of. They hook around your ear. They're not uncomfortable by any means, but I'm just not a huge fan of this cable. But thanks to that detachable design, you could swap out the cable, or if you wanna go wireless, they offer a Bluetooth wireless connection that you just plug right in and boom. Now you just turn these IEMs to little Bluetooth earbuds. Um, the most important thing is that these IEMs sound excellent and provide natural sound, which is great for not only music creation, but also audio editing when it comes to dialogue and vocals. This is partially due to the 10 millimeter CNT array dual chamber drivers and how they've been tuned. They'll set you back around a hundred bucks, which is really affordable considering the quality that these IEMs pack. In fact, many audio professionals have highly recommended these, which I stand behind as well, even though I'm not an audio professional. But you can't go wrong with these. And in case you're wondering, they do come with this nice little protective carrying case, as well as a few additional ear tips. That way you can match the size of your ear hole to get a nice good seal. The last thing that I've come to appreciate for my iPad Air is this headrest dock. Basically, it snaps into your headrest bars, and then you mount your iPad to it using the, you know, pulled spring-loaded mechanism. It's similar to like smartphone car mounts. If you have kids or if you have a bunch of friends and you're going on a road trip, this is awesome for watching shows, movies, and even playing some games when you connect your Xbox or PlayStation Bluetooth wireless controller. I mean, it's really, really nice, actually. Um, you have a sweet little portable entertainment setup for the people in the back, or if you want to swap out and you want to sit in the back while your friends drive, boom, there you go. Well, that does it for this video. That was several accessories I've been using with my iPad Air as of late. Let me know what you've been using or if you plan on picking up anything that I talked about in this video down in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see your beautiful smiling faces in the next one.